Welcome to the Definitive Mac Pro Upgrade Guide. My name's Greg, I'm the host and also the author of the Definitive Mac Pro Upgrade Guide. If you're not familiar with it, it's a very long form format for upgrading these guys, the classic Mac Pros. I also have one for the 2013 Mac Pros and hopefully one day for the 2019 Mac Pros. I figured I'd kick off my first video with one of the most common upgrades for the Mac Pro and also one of the easier ones, but it has some asterisks. So, without further ado, let's jump over to my Mac Pro. In front of me, I have a 5.1 Mac Pro. Before we talk about SSDs, I think we should go over the storage basics found on the Mac Pros. Every single Mac Pro has six SATA ports. This might come as a little bit of a surprise to the 2006 to 2008 owners. You can find them in the back part of the motherboard. I'll attempt to show them, but you can't really see it from this camera angle. The four drive bays use a pretty simple sled mechanism, however the pinouts don't align with every modern hard drive, as you can see here. Since I only have one hard drive that uses these pinouts, I have it positioned above the fan chassis as it stays propped in place by that, and it survived that way for years. If that makes you uncomfortable, which it probably should, you can actually buy or 3D print extra sleds. I have links to both of those in the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide, so I suggest you go check it out in the description of this video. Every single classic Mac Pro is equipped with only SATA 2. That means that any SATA 3 devices will be downstepped to SATA 2 speeds. This isn't really a big deal for spinning disk hard drives, as 300 megabytes per second is plenty of bandwidth. The 2006 to 2008 Mac Pros also have ATA100 in the optical bay. This limits you to two devices on a single channel in primary and secondary mode. ATA is pretty much dead at this point, so you're not going to find much in the way of hard drives. They'll be slow and small. Now it's time to talk SSDs, and before I get way too deep into this, I actually want to preface this that not all SSDs are created equal. I want to table this probably for another video breaking down all the different ways SSDs can differ. Also because Mac benchmarking software sucks for SSDs. Blackmagic disk speed test is probably the only major piece of SSD benchmarking software and it tests exactly one thing and that's continuous read and continuous write speeds. This is not a very good benchmark. In fact, I'd argue this is one of the less important benchmarks for most people, as random read and write times mimic general OS behavior. Various types of technology, including what type of memory cells SSDs use, can greatly affect the performance. I suggest you read the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide for more information on this. SATA SSDs are probably the most common SSD most Mac Pro users will use. That's because they're cheap, they're easy, and they work with every single Mac Pro without any additional hardware. They're also unsurprisingly the slowest SSDs. As I previously mentioned, all the Mac Pros come equipped with SATA 2.0. The problem is, most SSDs are SATA 3. Fortunately, they are backwards compatible, but this means they're capped to 300 megabytes per second. As you might expect, if you add a SATA 3 card, you'll now be capped to 600 megabytes per second. Not all SATA 3 cards are macOS bootable, so you need to make sure when buying one that it is indeed macOS bootable. Finally, it's time to talk M2. It's really important to understand that M2 does not equal NVMe. M2 is simply the form factor that NVMe and AHCI SSDs use. AHCI SSDs are pretty uncommon at this point. It's a variant of SATA, so it's faster than regular SATA, but it's not as fast as NVMe. The upside with AHCI SSDs is that they are bootable on all Mac Pros without any modification to the firmware. The downside is they're pretty expensive for what you get at this point in time because they're very uncommon. The other main M2 format is NVMe, which is based on PCIe, often referred to as PCIe-based storage. Whereas SATA SSDs were talking about 600 megabytes per second, the latest and greatest PCI 4.0 SSDs can jump up to 5 gigabytes per second. Now it's important to know that not all the Mac Pros can use NVMe, and the Mac Pros only have PCI 2.0. NVMe was not originally supported by the Mac Pros. In fact, the only Mac Pros that can boot NVMe are the 5.1 Mac Pros when updated to the latest firmware, 
or the 4.1s flash to the 5.1 firmware using the latest update. It is possible to hack the Mac Pro 3.1's firmware to use NVMe and boot it. That said, it's just not really a viable option for most people. It's deeply technical and you can brick your Mac Pro. Getting to the latest firmware on the Mac Pro 5.1's can be kind of tricky. So I've written a short guide on how to get to the latest firmware if you get stuck. It's linked in the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide and it's also linked in this video's description. The short answer is you need to have a metal compatible GPU and you need to remove any other non-metal supported GPUs. Metal is the latest graphics API used in macOS Mojave. The final piece you need is the combined installer for macOS Mojave. You don't need to actually go through installing Mojave, you just need the firmware that's included with the installer. NVMe is based off PCI 4X slots. As you should recall, the Mac Pro only has PCI 2.0. That means that the fastest a 4X slot can run in the real world is about 1500 megabytes per second. Unfortunately, since the cars themselves are 4X, even if you plug it into the 16X slot on a Mac Pro, it'll still run at 4X speeds. Pretty much all NVMe drives are PCI 3.0 or greater. That means you're not getting the full benefits of the PCI 3.0 speed, but fortunately you can get around that. Which leads me to my final topic, host cards. Most M2 host cards are compatible with Mac OS. Of course, there are some models that aren't, so if you're looking for a tried and true list of cards that are known to work with Mac OS, I suggest you go to the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. Once you start looking at host cards, you'll notice there's quite a few that support multiple NVMe drives. Unfortunately, they're probably not Mac OS compatible. This is because most of them rely on a technology known as bifurcation. Bifurcation allows the PCIe slot's bandwidth to be split. But no Mac Pro currently, including the 2019, supports bifurcation on the motherboard. The only way to get multiple NVMEs in one PCIe slot is to use a card that has a specialized controller, often referred to as a PCIe switch. The controller chipset functions as a way to address more PCIe lanes than the normal 4X allows. This in turn also increases the bandwidth to an individual SSD. Plugging one of these cards into one of your 16X slots on your Mac Pro means you'll realize way more speed on a single SSD, more in a RAID, or more writing between SSDs on the same PCIe card. If it's an 8X card, it'll cap out at about 3 gigabytes per second, whereas if it's a 16X card, it'll cap out at about 6 gigabytes per second. The only real downside is these cards aren't very common. There's really only one chipset that's out there that supports this, known as the ASM2824. Generally, if a card uses that chipset, it's supported by Mac OS. That said... It shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that not all these cards are compatible with the Mac Pro. Again, you're going to want to head to the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. I've curated a list of all the known working cards and I continue to keep it up to date. Oh, and before I forget, most users have trouble trying to boot Windows off NVMe. There are people who have success, and again, that is also linked in the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. Now for a quick recap. 2006 to 2008 Mac Pro owners pretty much have one vector, and that is with SATA SSDs. They can also improve the speed by upgrading to a SATA 3 card. Any Mac Pro that's 2009 or later can boot NVMe. You need to first update your firmware to the latest firmware to be able to boot NVMe. Not all M2 cards are Mac Pro compatible. NVMe drives will also be speed capped by the PCI 2.0 bus unless you buy a specialized card with a controller chipset able to address more PCIe lanes. These same cards can also use multiple NVMe drives. And thus concludes the first definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide video. Hey, thanks for watching the first definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide video. It's a little rough like the Oregon coast is today, so hopefully you found it useful. If you'd like to see more, let me know, and thanks for watching.